let's yeah. start by saying let's start by saying happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody out there. Um, Celtics didn't hold up their end of the bargain on St. Patrick's Day of all days, but um, we we'll try not to let it ruin ruin the day. I'll say this: I'm having a better St. Patrick's Day than I did last St. Patrick's Day when it was like the start of COVID and Tom Brady was like, "Oh, by the way, I'm out." Like, so was that what happened? Yeah. Yeah. Was we, it on St. Patrick's we, Day? It was on St. Patrick's Day, and I yeah. I'll never forget it. I was on I was I'll never, I'm not going to get into it, but I'll just never forget how bad that day was. But today's better. Celtics couldn't hold it up on their end, but we're moving on. Uh, what do you guys? Do you want to start at the beginning or start at the end? And why don't you skip the game? Well, the first half uh, was a disaster. Should we get Should we get right to Bobby crying about they have to do something, or do we do we want to wait a little on that? We can do that. Five minutes. Let's bit, do five bit, minutes though. on the game. All right. So, all right. Let's let's start at the end. I, you know, it, it, again, the end matters. It's hard. Look, I, I don't even know. I mean, they they clearly didn't come out to play, um, and and they were just sleepwalking. I thought it was clear. It's. I felt like they read the articles written about them last night. Um, and like they tried to play, I don't know what they tried to do, but they jacked a ton of threes. And I know that that was a criticism that they weren't taking enough of them. And it looked like they went out of their way to take a bunch of threes. They just weren't really falling. Um, they just didn't, the, the effort on the first half was just atrocious. I mean, that was a really bad, that first quarter was, it was just awful. They just, they just didn't show up. We'll get into the, I know you guys said, start with the late. I did want to start at the beginning. Like, how do you come out like that? A little tired, maybe. I mean, I know mean, oh, that's like an excuse, obviously, but it was the second night of a back to back on the road. No Kemba Walker. Um, they stink to begin with. Uh, what else? Um, again, slow well, start from from Tatum and Brown, right? I mean, isn't that what it always what it always comes comes down to? I mean, Tatum was on fire yeah, there uh, late in the game. I mean, he was, you know, he was, you know, all star Tatum. But again, it, it feels like it takes these guys. A half to get into the game. Yeah, and I mean, J- Jalen did it in the third, up. Tatum in yeah. the fourth, but, and but yeah, nothing in the first half. I mean, they, yeah. they, can't shoot, they, can't, they can't shoot and they can't defend, so you can't come out and play with no effort. But go ahead, Josue. No, I think you can say that, but also, I mean, l- l- let's face it, and, and I don't know this anonymous player that said it. I mean, Goodman had the scoop, right? Like th- these guys have a target on their back, so I, I think when teams see Tatum and Brown struggling. They just get amped up. I mean, listen, Colin Sexton, Darius Garland. I'm like, these are two proven scores. And you don't think they've done their homework? I mean, let's face it. This isn't the first time back, you know, guys in the backcourt have gone nuts against the Celtics. And you get that opportunity in the first quarter. And I just think they they just not – listen, teams aren't afraid of the Celtics. I think that's what it is. So if the Celtics don't come out with that intensity on defense, then they see the green light and they go nuts, specifically on the road. And especially when you have top-notch score. Well, I, okay, listen, we're not going to call them top-notch scores, but, I mean, they'll put up 20 a night any given night. And when they see the Celtics and Jason Tatum, they see an opportunity to prove themselves. And I think that's what that's what we saw. I mean, listen, yeah, they got out to a slow start, Tatum and Brown, but also let's not forget the fact that the, the Cavs punched them in the mouth and they grabbed that lead quickly. And they, ha- they had a steady lead throughout most of that first half. I mean, they were comfortable out there. The Celtics don't make teams co- uncomfortable. That's the problem. Yeah, they, they don't get out in transition enough. I think quite a few of their problems stem from that slow start. So Marcus Smart had to end up taking most of the response, uh, offensive responsibilities throughout this one. And you know, we often see how that goes. It got them back into it a little bit late. But it wasn't a recipe for success. And I thought once you get behind on the offensive end, you lose some of that defensive intensity. So both their issues on both sides of the floor leaked into each other, specifically for Smart, who I thought was so bad defensively in this one, getting torched by those guards who can be great on some nights. I think those guys have potential, Sexton and Garland, but the ceiling's not massive for either of them. I don't see Lillard or you know high-level guards for either of those guys. They're, they're quality guards. They're inefficient. They're shooting the low 40s. They're 38% three-point shooters, so sometimes they can go off from that aspect. But the defense wasn't good enough tonight, and a large part of it was because they were jacking so many shots. They weren't moving offensively. They were missing a ton of shots, so they were giving feed-outs for Cleveland to get out in transition. And as they've done all season, they gave up points look, in the paint after points in the paint. Look, the, the stat of the night is the Jays took 50 shots, 50 shots, okay? 
they, they, they were five for 23 from three, okay? Just inefficient offense, okay? They're just jacking threes, and they just didn't hit. Uh, all missing game free throws still. A couple games ago, just, they did that as well. That's the, 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 those, are the, those are the stat lines of, um, you know, guys who put up 20-something on losing teams, you know? That, that's, that's what you see. And th- those are those are those are loser stat lines, okay? And like yeah. they both, and, and it's unfair. I mean, again, the, they played well in, against Utah, you know, better than they did tonight. They both played not great tonight, and they just jacked a ton of shots. They didn't go in, um, and that's what you have, you know. It's again, it's a, you know. It, I mean, I didn't think they shot awful. They just they had it just really really cold in the first half. I mean, obviously, yeah. I mean, if you look at the two uh, three pointers. Um, Jalen Brown was two for 10. So obviously that's horrific. But aside from that, I wasn't like, oh my God, these guys are. No, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. If they pass to people, we're like, what the hell are they having Grant well, shoot the for? Thing. They're, right. they're screwed. Like, they're screwed. We yeah. want them to shoot. But if, if they're not shooting 40 to 50%, then, you know, this a game like this happens, you know, especially if you're not playing defense that you're capable of playing. It felt like in the second half they came alive, but. I give credit to the Cavs. They didn't, you know, they, they didn't give up, you know, they, they, they kept hitting big shots too. And, 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 you know, they were aggressive and, you know, Sexton, you know, got, got a little bit going there later in the game once he, he was quiet for a bit. So, I mean, you give a bad team, you give a bad team hope. They're not really a bad team anymore. And that's kind of what the Celtics did and what they've done. Let me ask you this for anybody. I, I understand the conundrum here with the Jays is, of course, we argue when they don't – I mean, we, we blame them when they don't shoot. You know, we blame them when they do. They're in a tough spot. <laughs> but I don't know if they understand the concept of making your team better in terms yeah. of – that's, that's kind of what it comes down to. There's, it's one thing to say to just decide to not shoot on this possession versus yeah. actively trying – to work other people into the offense. Do you think when those guys have the ball that their primary thought is, how am I going to get the ball to somebody in a scoring position on this play? Oh, or they're no. thinking, how am I going to get mine? And not exactly. mine because they want the stats, mine because that's how they're wired to play. You know, Jalen Brown, when he starts to go, he's not looking for a dump off. I mean, how many times have you seen him start going to the basket and he dishes ever very very rarely okay it's a it's a straight go so yeah. it's I, and that's why I, I that's why i think people don't get it. like sometimes they'll get some assist numbers and it happens but again there's a difference between just not shooting every time down and actively trying right. to make your teammates better i don't know that they're doing it enough um it's so i don't know how those guys would do um you know if if if, if it went a little differently I, I i really don't know i really don't know no, I'm with you, John. I, I agree with that. I think you're spot on because I, I think, I think a lot they have of tunnel vision when they have the ball. That's it. I, I I think put it this way: going into that fourth quarter, and listen, I get it. Tatum went five for five in that beginning, you know, stretch of that of that fourth quarter. And you're like, okay, here we go. Here, here comes the Celtics. But at the same time, you do going into that fourth quarter. These guys aren't going to look to their teammates and say, all right, let's all you know get together and try to come back here because they're like, listen, this is the Cleveland Cavaliers. We have to take over this one, all right? This isn't, a, you know, a, a, one of the top teams in the NBA, so now it's up to us to take over. And I, and I definitely thought uh, saw that. But honestly, John, I'm thinking that maybe these two could pull it off tonight. You know, I'll be honest. I'll, I'll, I'll keep it 100 because, honestly, Jalen Brown, that fifth one in a row, he gave that look to Jason Tatum. You know, I was like, you know what, Jalen, I, I respected that because he recognized that, that, that Tatum was hot. And you know what? I was I got to go in the third quarter, but I'm gonna keep Tatum going. And I thought that was really, you know, that, that was a good representation of, of their relationship in the sense of that they were able to work off of each other. But in the end of the day, you know, when the Cavs really got going, they panicked and they took they took bad shots. You know, so yes, they're not in that spot where you can say, okay, Tatum and Brown are gonna save the day. You know, nine times out of ten. You know, and that's a problem for this team, obviously, because we're talking about a 500 team, and they they rely heavily on those two all stars. So when they're when they're up against a, a double digit deficit in the fourth quarter, that's not always guaranteed. Even if Jason Tatum goes five for five to start the quarter, that the Celtics are going to be able to pull that one out. Yep. Yeah, I think the offense is kind of set up for those limitations that they have in those games. It's a ton of isolation. It's a ton of direct action. And you see Tatum and Brown get most of their assists off either kickouts in the lane when the defense collapses. 
uh, maybe some rolling bigs here or there, specifically when Rob's in the game. But there isn't a high level of movement. And that starts with them, but it also stems from other players who are more stagnant around them. Guys that don't move, guys that aren't positionally aware on the floor. Smart helps that somewhat. I think we've seen the offense get a little better since his return, especially oh. since he can facilitate. But yeah. beyond that, that's it. But why move though? That's the thing. Is this is where it gets like? Do you see them hitting a lot of? I mean, outside of Rob, who who and and Marcus, who find guys going back door and things like that, and are looking. I mean, the two guys who try to set people up, I mean, amazingly, are Smart and and Rob Williams. Uh, yeah, you know, which is which is uh, which is unreal to me. Uh, but but it is. Wow. First, Rob how many Williams guys? Mentioned. How many guys are cutting because they think like, oh, Tatum's gonna find me? Like nobody. You know, like you talk about stagnation, like. I just don't think you do that. You, we've all played some level of basketball to the point where, like, you know who you're on the court with, and you're like, I make a sharp cut here, and I get my man leaning, and I go back door. He's going to find me. He's going to, you know, so you're you're looking for these opportunities. You're like, this is how I'm going to get the ball in my hands. I just don't know what the point of it is here. It's it, this is an isolation offense. I mean, you look at the you look at the end of the game and how this goes down. It's 100 to 96. What happens? They hand the ball to Tatum. He's dribbling against three guys trapped in the corner. That whole possession, you're like, this is going to end badly. And he takes because a really they, poor shot. They go the other way and score. Then Brown misses a friggin' early in the shot clock three. A Coro with the dunk and one ball game. That's it. Four goes to nine, and that was it. You know? Right. Just, just ugly stuff. And again, you want them taking the shots, but I mean – the degree of difficulty on the shots, the forces, never looking around for other people. You know, and again, I, I get it. There's plenty in the comments right now saying, what do you want him to do? I don't know. You know, you, you don't you don't really know. Uh, it seems like they're cursed either way. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's that's sort of yeah, that's sort of spot on here because when you think about it in those situations, I mean they're not gonna look to those guys unless there's four four seconds on the shot clock and they're triple teamed. I mean, let's face it, guys, those role players, that's when they that's when they're, they're ready to catch and shoot because otherwise they know that at the end of the day, Tatum and Brown, especially when they're in panic mode, are going are gonna, to uh, try to take things into their own hands. They're only looking for their teammates and those opportunities when there's you know little to, to, to no, no more time left on the shot clock. Yeah, I don't know. I, people, are mad here in, people are mad here in the comments. It is hard to blame the Jays. You're not – again, they're, dra they're graded on a curve, guys. They're, you're either mm – -hmm. Two stars that can transcend, you know, some mediocre lineups and get your team through tough times, or you're the two you're the two guys who get stats on a bad team. You, it, you're no. one of those two, right? You know, no. the, the, every team has a couple of ball players like this. You know, not every team, but there's a lot of there's a lot of teams with with a tandem of stars right now, and some are able, you know, and some have better supporting cast than others. But right now, they're trending towards. You know, just being able to just do this with this with this group and not much else. I, I know they need a facelift, and I know Bobby, you're dying for something here. I don't know what makes this better right now. I really don't know. I don't know that one player makes one other player standing around waiting for his turn to score. I don't know if that makes it better. Bobby's, I mean, maybe Bobby's about to trade a whole bench right now. I don't know. Bobby's about to trade a whole second unit. Get him out of here. I don't know what else you do at this point because the, what's, what's going on right now isn't working. So we, we can have that discussion again later, but it's it's one of two directions at this point. You either free up younger players on the roster for more opportunity, more minutes, and hope that they can fill those roles better, or you consolidate minutes of a grant, of a semi, of those guys who, again, fairly empty minutes tonight, especially semi in that starting lineup. It, that. That starting lineup, I know going into the game before this, the game before this, that had actually been their best lineup uh, that had played at least 20 minutes together. They were like a plus 36, but you didn't see it in that game.